Nine months ago in October, I had a rare gig. I was giving some talks and courses up in Inverness, north of Scotland. It was really nice to get, get, get out actually in, in a lockdown year. And on the way back, I took the opportunity to visit Edward, who's at Edinburgh University. And he, while, while I was there, he was showing me his garlic he'd bought in Lidl. And it was pretty cheap. It was like really good value. And then he said, oh, wouldn't it be fun maybe to, to plant some of this and see how it grows? And yeah, it could be a good story, buy cheap garlic seed in Lidl supermarket. And so, yeah, okay. <laughs> I brought it home and popped it in. And it, it's been growing since then. Now we're just coming to harvest it nearly nine months later, mid-July, which is a pretty normal time for hard neck garlic in our part of the world. And it's been, I've grown it in the polytunnel, so uh, I find growing in the tunnel uh, really good. Like, to give you some examples, <laughs> I'll get all three of these. There's um, elephant garlic, <laughs> which is not really garlic, but that's just for a bit of fun. That was growing right there, and we harvested it yesterday morning. That also we harvested yesterday morning, and that's hard neck, typical hard neck garlic, uh, but smaller than the ones from Little. I'm growing organically, by the way, uh, no fertilizer, just no dig, compost mulch. Plants grow well, as you can see from these tomatoes and cucumber, but um, you know, maybe the garlic would be slightly bigger if we put a bit of fertilizer, but not the same quality and flavor. And this is uh, soft neck. So again, no fertilizer for these. They were growing just up the middle here. Again, given no special space, just between the lettuces and, and other salads that we pick through the winter. And then it stays there while we put a bit of compost on for the year of cropping ahead and the plant the tomatoes. And this was harvested around about three weeks ago. So let's have a look now and we'll see what's happening here. The, all through the winter, this area had peas for pea shoots and the garlic was at the back. Not It didn't have any dedicated space for itself. It just sort of growing behind the peas. And then we cleared the peas around the middle of April when we got outdoor pea shoots then. The peas were for shoots and then we could see a bit how the garlic was growing. It looks all right, actually. It looked okay then. It looked better than it does now. <laughs> I'm not too clear what's going on here. Like all these new shoots, it looks as though the maybe the bulbs are differentiated and then some of the cloves are shooting again and you can see it's pretty variable a few I haven't taken the scape off i thought i'd just leave that to show you that's what you do with hard neck garlic it's called the scape or stem that would flower if it was left on <clears throat> but there's a lot of rust here as well as you can see and that that's definitely compromised the growth it's less than we had on the outdoor garlic but it's still rusty and i am not expecting a fantastic result but there's only one way to find out and look at that, not bad. That one is okay, actually. I'd be very happy with that. This one, I'm very intrigued at what is going on here. Is there an, oh, actually there is a nice bulb. Well, nice. <laughs> Do you know what? This would have benefited from harvesting about um, two weeks ago, probably. This is classic of what happens. This one looks like we put, somehow managed to put three cloves in the same planting hole but I do remember doing that just to see because we were getting to the end and running out of space and actually not a bad result is it from one planting hole that's a lot of garlic what's happened though from it being left in the ground a long time is that the um, outer skin has decayed and that is why I'm always saying don't leave your garlic in too long and that's why we've harvested most of the rest of the garlic at Homemakers. Uh, there's just one little bit we haven't. Uh, I'll just whistle through these. Now this one looks pretty nice and just shows that some of them, oh yeah, look at that as well. It's doing all sorts of funny things here. So this one looks like it's differentiated into just two bulbs. Well, I'll quickly get that off. You can do this at harvest time to see more clearly what's going on. And that is exactly what, looks, what it looks like. We have two bowls for some reason. This looks like some kind of almost mutant strain. So all of this grew from precisely two bulbs originally. That's probably I'm about halfway there. So that's one. What you're seeing there altogether is one 
bulb of garlic. And here's another thing that can happen if you leave garlic too long. It's pretty wet actually. I would say we've been overwatering a bit there. Um, it's slightly rotting out. That one might not be any good. Yeah, that one definitely isn't any good. I say actually, it's really, <laughs> it's really smelly. What I'm going to do um, afterwards is walk on this ground, by the way, just to firm it down again. With no dig, you don't want loose ground. That's never the idea. And so after harvest like this, which do involve a bit of soil disturbance, uh, that's what I'd reckon to do. Yeah, here's another funny one. See, it's, um, it's got swelling there, but not much at the bottom. I don't know what this is, actually. It's not like... Normally, I reckon that I can... I save all my own seed. The soft neck garlic I showed you at the beginning is from from a greengrocer garlic, store-bought garlic, 28 years ago, no, 24 years ago, and um, that's just been growing ever since. I just keep the biggest cloves, or biggest bulbs, and differentiate them into cloves for planting every autumn. So there's no reason why you can't keep your own seed, actually. Something I'm thinking I might do is, say, select one nice bulb like that one and plant it in October. See if we can sort of create a bit of a, a healthy strain here in lovely, healthy soil. So, I mean, that this garlic was designed for eating. It wasn't designed for doing this. And actually, considering that, the results are OK. That cost exactly one pound for seed from the supermarket and... Well, there you are, throwing some ideas out at you, or what you could do. So here we are. That's after a, as much cleaning as I can do. Once, once the outer skin has gone, you, you can't really clean them up much. I've cut the roots and mud off as much as I can. And there is a lot of garlic here. It's just a very variable quality. And true seed garlic, I don't think, would do this or grow this level of variability, uh, which is not the end of the world. There's still food. Um, as I say, I think I'd keep, keep one or two of these, maybe these two, for example, to grow from next year. Maybe they've adapted the best to local conditions here. We'll see. And one thing I would mention is, you know, for me in the morning, every day, I'll take one of these and they, they peel off beautifully when they're fresh, garlic, and they also don't taste quite so pungent. So for me, that's a really nice thing to eat at breakfast time.